Have you ever wondered why strange, ancient creatures from the deepest parts of the ocean are suddenly being seen near the surface or even washed up on our shores? On November 6th, off the coast of California, a massive 10-foot-long oarfish was discovered. Just a few days later, California was rocked by a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, the strongest in over three decades. This isn't an isolated event. In 2017, multiple oarfish were seen near the Philippines, and shortly after, a 6.6 magnitude earthquake struck, killing 85 people. These deep sea creatures, especially the oarfish, also called the king of herrings, are rarely seen. In over 125 years, they've been spotted only about 20 times along California's coast. Yet every time they do appear, disaster seems to follow. Another chilling sighting came from Mexico, where an anglerfish, usually found 10,000 feet deep, was seen floating near the surface, barely alive. In India, thousands of fish jumped out of the sea in what looked like a mass suicide. Soon after, 150 dolphins washed ashore in Tasmania, the largest stranding in over 50 years. In another case, 300 fish were found dead on Australia's west coast, and on the coast of Odisha, India, over 700,000 turtles suddenly appeared at once. Are these just random incidents, or are these deep-sea animals sensing something we can't? In Japan, oarfish are known as messengers from the sea god. Locals believe they come to warn of natural disasters. Before the devastating 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, which killed 18,000 people, multiple oarfish were spotted near Fukushima. That quake registered a massive 9.1 magnitude and triggered a 130-foot tsunami. Science often says these events are coincidental or caused by factors like underwater currents, sickness, or disorientation. But for cultures like Japan, these signs are taken seriously. And when we look closer, it becomes harder to ignore the patterns. The truth is, we know shockingly little about our own oceans. Over 80% of the deep sea remains unexplored. There are creatures living in the dark, at depths of over 10,000 feet, in conditions that would crush human submarines. Yet somehow, life survives there. And not just any life but some of the most alien-looking and resilient species on Earth. To understand why they might be surfacing, we have to go back, way back. Around 4.2 billion years ago, Earth was a fiery planet covered in lava, constantly bombarded by asteroids. There was no liquid water, just toxic gases and hellish temperatures. But over time, volcanoes began releasing water vapor into the air. This vapor eventually cooled and condensed into rain which fell for millions of years and filled the planet's vast basins, giving birth to the first oceans. Life didn't begin in sunlight, it began in darkness. Deep in the oceans, hydrothermal vents, cracks in the ocean floor that spew boiling mineral-rich water, became the first nurseries of life. Microbes fed off the chemicals and heat, forming the earliest life forms. These organisms didn't need light, they needed only water energy, and chemistry. Fast forward a few billion years, and life exploded in variety during the Cambrian explosion. Nearly every major animal group we know today appeared in just 50 million years. But not all creatures stayed in the shallows. Some fled to the deep sea. To survive, they evolved. Some developed bioluminescence, glowing like ghosts in the dark. Others grew massive. The colossal squid can reach over 40 feet in length. The Greenland shark can live more than 400 years. Giant spider crabs can stretch 13 feet across. These are real creatures, not myths. But Earth hasn't always been kind to life. 250 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction wiped out 96% of marine species. Only the toughest survived, extremophiles that could withstand acid, heat, and poison. These survivors passed their strange, durable genes down the line, giving rise to the monstrous deep-sea species we see today. So why are they rising now? There are a few theories. Underwater volcanic activity could be changing the chemistry of their environment. 
oxygen levels might be dropping, forcing them to move higher. Warming ocean temperatures caused by climate change are creating dead zones where nothing can live. Pollution, deep sea mining, and overfishing are all disrupting fragile ecosystems. And then there's tectonic movement. Most deep sea life lives along the Pacific Ring of Fire, the same region where 90% of the world's earthquakes occur. Could it be that these creatures are reacting to vibrations, pressure shifts, or chemical changes before an earthquake hits? While scientists don't fully agree, they do acknowledge one thing. When deep sea creatures start behaving strangely, it means something in their environment has changed drastically. These animals aren't just old, they're ancient. They've outlived the dinosaurs. They've survived ice ages, firestorms, and mass extinctions. If they're surfacing now, it's not just chance. Maybe they're warning us. We often think of the ocean as a separate world, but it's not. It's our planet's lungs, its climate engine, its life source, and it's in danger. As we poison the oceans, as we overheat the atmosphere, as we disturb the balance that took billions of years to build, we risk more than just environmental collapse. We risk ignoring nature's loudest alarms. Maybe the ocean isn't screaming yet, but it's whispering, and we need to listen. Because if we don't, the silence that follows might be permanent.